It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Charitable Donation Enforcement Actions. When is a rose not a rose? When it is a charitable donation not made for philanthropic purposes and violates the FCPA. This was a feature of the Eli Lilly FCPA enforcement action brought by the SEC in 2012 involving a bribery scheme utilized by Lilly in Poland. The scheme and the FCPA violations mirrored an earlier FCPA enforcement action also brought by the SEC as a civil matter rather than by the DOJ as a criminal matter against sharing plow for making charitable donations in Poland which violated the FCPA. One of the remarkable things about both of these enforcement actions brought almost eight years apart was that they involved improper payments to the same Polish charitable foundation to wrongfully influence the same Polish government official to purchase products or services from both of these companies. The companies were involved in negotiations for the sale of products with the director of the Silesian Health Fund. He had established a charitable foundation, the Chudow Foundation, to engage in the restoration of ancient castles in Poland. Both companies made a total of nearly $114,000 in donations to the Chudow Foundation at or near the time when decisions were made regarding the purchase of products or services by the Silesian Health Fund. Lily's donation totaled nearly $38,000, sharing plows totaled nearly 76000 The FCPA books and records violations for the donations stated they were all mischaracterized on the respective companies' books and records. Although all of these donations were approved by a team within Lilly called the Medical Grant Committee, who reviewed the request for such donations, the committee's approval was largely based on the justification and description in the submitted paperwork. While two of the donations, one to purchase computers, the other to support the Chudow Foundation itself, may have had tangential value to the stated purpose of the Chudow Foundation, subsequent donations were earmarked for renting castle space for conferences. There was clearly a quid pro quo as an action to obtain business. Just as clearly the rental of Castle is not a charitable donation but an expenditure, even with the understanding the SEC complaint noted that Lilly held no conferences at the Castle, at any Castle, so it was an outright misrepresentation. The Sharing Plow SEC complaint noted that the company manager involved in the payment scheme provided false medical justifications for most of the payments on the documents that he submitted to the company's finance department. Additionally, he structured the payments so they were at or below his approval limit so he did not have to seek permission to make the improper payments. The manager in question viewed the donations as dues that were required to be paid for the assistance from the director. So what were the factors that would become red flags for the review of charitable donations based upon these enforcement actions? The sharing plow complaint listed several items which were deemed indicia of red flags. Number one, there was no new, no due diligence performed on the charity. Number two, the donations were not related to health care. While a company is permitted donations to health care related programs, there was no follow-up determination of the purposes or uses of the donated funds. Three, outside their normal range of donations, the next red flag was that the donations made to this single charitable foundation equal approximately 40% of the company's promotional budgets in 2000 and 20% in 2001 proportionate sales sharing plows sales increased disproportionately compared to its own sales of the same product in other areas in Poland. Up to 53% of one product was sold in the region by the director of the Silesian Health Fund. The Lilly SEC complaint listed several items which it deemed indicia of red flags. Once again, there was no due diligence performed on the charity to identify the director of the Silesian Health Fund as the founder or his role in the Chudow Foundation. The donations were not related to health care. Unlike sharing plow, the reasons listed for the charitable donations did not relate to health care at all. Moreover, they were approved by a committee specifically tasked for reviewing such requests, and they failed to investigate beyond the submitted paperwork. Three, 
outside the normal range of donations. Once again, the SEC quoted an email from Lilly who said that the company had decided to commit 70 to 75 percent of its charitable donation budget and that the director of the Silesian Health Fund was given a free hand to manage this Lilly investment. And four, suspicious timing. The donations were made at or near the time decisions on the purchase of the Lilly products were made by the director of the Silesian Health Fund. One donation was made two days after the director agreed to purchase of Lilly products. Here, Lilly used charitable donations to a charitable foundation, which was, as stated by the SEC, founded and administered by the head of one of the regional government health authorities at the same time that subsidiary was seeking the official support for placing Lilly drugs on the government reimbursement list. There was a total of eight payments made to the charitable foundation. In addition to the charitable donations made by Lilly, the company falsely characterized the proposed payments. Lilly had a group within the organization which reviewed the request for such donations called the Medical Grant Committee, which approved the payments largely based upon the justifications and description of the submitted paperwork. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, number one is that every compliance practitioner should study both of these FCPA enforcement actions. In many ways, SEC enforcement actions are more useful than DOJ enforcement actions because they really get into the weeds and specify not only the violations, but how you can overcome the violations and what you need to do. The red flags pointed out in both of these FCPA enforcement actions clearly lay out the actions you need to take. You need to have due diligence. You need to make sure that your donations are uh, related to your industry. You need to look at the range of the donations to see if they're outside your normal range. You need to look at the timing of the donations. Did you land a big contract or a payment at or near the time of the donations? And you need to look at whether your sales spiked after making the donations. Two, what were the purposes of the charitable entity you're making the donation to? The Chudow Foundation itself was a legitimate charity, but it did not relate to health care in any way. So what's the purpose of the charity you're giving money to? And then finally, and near and dear to my heart, is document, document, your due diligence around donors and your investigation of them beyond what's simply in the paperwork submitted to your organization. These are significant issues you need to consider going forward. I hope you will enjoy the entire month on written standards and that you will listen in again where we explore another topic. If I could ask you to do, would you pass on to at least one person this podcast series on the nuts and bolts of compliance as I'm trying to expand my audience base for 31 days to a more effective compliance program. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow where I take up another topic. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.